Look around you. The smartphone in your hand, the laptop on your desk, the electric car you might drive, all depend on a hidden ingredient rare earth elements. These metals are the lifeblood of modern technology, making our screens brighter, our motors more powerful, and our electronics smaller. For decades, the world has relied on a single dominant supplier for these critical materials, China. This dependency gives China quiet but powerful leverage over nearly every aspect of our daily lives. China's dominance is no accident, it's the result of a 40-year strategy. While other countries closed their minds, China expanded, using low labor costs and lax environmental rules to become the world's factory for rare earths. Now the world is waking up to the risks of this arrangement. Imagine a world where electric vehicles halt production or wind turbines can't be built, all because one nation controls over 80% of the global supply. The implications are not just economic, they're geopolitical. China's dominance lets it influence international trade, security, and technological development. This is a strategic advantage that rivals military strength, a subtle yet profound power shaping the 21st century. Today, governments from Washington to Brussels to New Delhi are scrambling for solutions. They're trying to undo decades of outsourcing and neglect. Rebuilding a rare earth supply chain takes years, even decades, and requires massive investment and international cooperation. The story of China's rare earth monopoly is a lesson in foresight, strategy, and the high stakes of global trade. It's a story that affects us all. The world is at a crossroads, forced to confront its reliance on a single supplier. The question now, can we break free from China's grip before it's too late? Rare earth elements aren't actually rare. They're a group of 17 metals found throughout the earth's crust. What makes them special is the difficulty of mining and processing them, not their scarcity. They're often mixed with other minerals, sometimes even radioactive ones, making extraction complex and messy. These elements are the secret sauce of modern technology, with unique magnetic, luminescent, and catalytic properties. Neodymium creates the world's strongest magnets, essential for electric vehicles, wind turbines, and your phone's vibration motor. Europium and terbium make your screens vibrant. Rare earths are also critical in MRI machines, missile guidance systems, and refining crude oil. Their importance can't be overstated. They're the building blocks of the high-tech, green energy future. Control over rare earths isn't just about a commodity, it's about controlling the future of innovation. Any country that dominates their production holds a powerful lever over global manufacturing. And right now, almost every step of the rare earth journey runs through China. This reality has forced the world to confront a vulnerability it long ignored. The race to secure these elements is on. China's rare earth dominance was no accident. It was a calculated move. In the 1980s, Deng Xiaoping declared, the Middle East has oil, China has rare earths. China invested in mining, processing, and research, designating rare earths as a strategic sector. With cheap labor and weak environmental rules, China undercut Western producers, driving them out of business. By the early 2000s, China not only mined rare earths, but also mastered the complex processing steps. It built a vertically integrated industry, controlling every link from mine to magnet. By 2010, China produced over 95% of the world's rare earths. The rest of the world, seeking cheap products and avoiding environmental costs, outsourced this critical supply. The result? A near total monopoly. The world enjoyed cheap rare earths, without realizing the strategic price. Now that price is coming due. The world's first major shock came in 2010. A territorial dispute with Japan led China to quietly halt rare earth shipments, sending global markets into panic. Prices skyrocketed, and industries realized their vulnerability. Automakers, electronics, and defense contractors all depended on a supply chain that could be cut off overnight. For the first time, rare earths became a national security issue in the US, Europe, and beyond. Since then, China has tightened export controls, citing environmental protection but also flexing its geopolitical muscle. In 2023, it restricted exports of gallium and germanium, metals crucial for semiconductors. More recently, it's added controls on rare earth processing technologies. These moves threaten the industrial ambitions of countries like the US, EU, and India. A slowdown in rare earths could cripple everything from smartphones to electric vehicles. The squeeze is being felt everywhere. The world can no longer ignore the risks. 
China's rare earth control ripples through every major industry. The automotive sector is on the front lines. Each electric vehicle needs about a kilogram of rare earth magnets. When China restricts exports or prices spike, car makers face higher costs or production delays threatening jobs and the green transition. A single missing magnet can halt an entire assembly line. The tech sector is equally vulnerable. Apple, Samsung, and Google all rely on rare earths for their flagship products. Disruptions could delay launches, raise costs, or force inferior materials, stifling innovation. Even small businesses and startups are at risk, unable to source critical materials. China's monopoly creates persistent uncertainty, making long-term planning risky for everyone outside its sphere. The world's industrial landscape is on edge. Europe is taking defensive measures. German industrial giants, backed by their government, are stockpiling rare earths and other critical materials. This German warehouse strategy buys time if China cuts off exports, giving factories a few months of breathing room. It's a pragmatic, temporary solution. Stockpiling is expensive and only lasts so long. The German government encourages this approach, offering incentives and coordinating efforts. But stockpiles are a finite resource and can't solve the underlying problem. The real solution is diversifying supply. The German model is being watched by other European nations and the US. It marks a shift from just-in-time to just-in-case manufacturing. The focus is now on resilience and security, not just efficiency. The stockpile is a bridge, not a destination. Europe knows it must build a more secure and independent rare earth supply chain. The US has been jolted into action. For years it relied on cheap Chinese rare earths as its own industry faded. Now there's bipartisan consensus. Rebuilding a domestic supply chain is urgent. The Mountain Pass mine is back online and the government is funding new exploration and processing. The Pentagon is investing in domestic facilities for military-grade rare earths. The goal a secure mine-to-magnet supply chain within the US or trusted allies. But rebuilding is tough. Environmental rules are strict, expertise is scarce, and China can undercut prices. The US faces a high-stakes race to reverse decades of decline. The clock is ticking. No country can solve this alone, so the US and its allies are building new partnerships. Australia and Canada, with significant rare earth deposits, are central to this effort. Companies like Linus are expanding mining and processing outside China, with support from the US and others. These alliances connect resource-rich countries with manufacturing hubs in Japan, Europe, and North America. The focus isn't just mining, it's also joint research into better processing and recycling, turning electronic waste into a new supply. This urban mining approach reduces dependency and environmental impact. The challenge. China has a 30-year head start and a deeply entrenched market. Building a competing supply chain requires massive investment and government support. Purchase guarantees, tariffs, and incentives may be needed to level the playing field. Forging these alliances is complex, but it's the most promising path to a secure supply. The world is racing to catch up. The rare earth story is a lesson in the dangers of over-reliance. The pursuit of efficiency led to a risky dependence on a single supplier. The path forward is resilience, diversifying supply, investing in new tech, and building international cooperation. It's not about decoupling from China but de-risking our economies. Innovation is key. Scientists are designing motors that use fewer rare earths and companies like Tesla are leading the way. Research into substitutes and recycling holds promise. The best way to counter a monopoly is to make the monopolized product less essential. This issue affects everyone, the stability of our energy, the cost of goods, and the pace of innovation. The green transition depends on a secure supply of these minerals. The world's response will shape the future of technology and trade. As of July 2025, the race is on. The journey will be long and complex, but the goal is clear. A balanced, resilient, and secure global supply chain. The choices we make now will determine our technological future.